Here we are once again with another Chef Knives to Go Quick Look product review. I'm Steve Gamash, and this time we are looking at the Harukaze Wa, or Japanese handled Awagami Super Guto 180mm knife. So the core steel on this line of knives is what's known as Awagami Blue Super, reactive high carbon steel from Hitachi. Heat treats around 63 Rockwell on that core steel, so this uh, Awagami Super, or AS as it's called, has uh, high edge retention, it's reasonable to sharpen on the stones, and uh, takes a really nice edge. So it's one of the, one of the uh, I guess, higher edge retention traditional uh, reactive carbon steels. And it's very good if you like edge retention. Um, the construction is three layers, so on either side of that harder core steel, you've got a softer cladding. Now, the site says stainless. These I found the, this line of knives, and as well as some other ones, the cladding really can be fairly reactive. This I'd call it kind of kind of semi-stainless, so it it'll tend to react um, depending on what kind of stuff you're cutting. So don't don't be freaked out or anything if the cladding starts getting a patina on it just as well as the core. Um, you know, I mean it's, it is what it is, but it's um, it's a very nice knife and the performance is excellent on these. They're they're ground quite thin. They're very very good performing knives. So just FYI on the cladding. The weight on this, these are light and thin, so this one's 125 grams or 4.4 ounces, and these might vary a little bit from knife to knife. Uh, this one is a little oversized, it's 188 millimeters, so almost 190, uh, 7.4 inches on the edge, and the overall um, length is about 12.9 inches. Blade height is 43.75, almost 44. Uh, you still get pretty good board clearance though. You've got a fairly thin neck, um, so decent board clearance for this. Actually, it's quite good. The um, spine thickness, as I said, these are ground thin and they're pretty thin overall. So it's about 2.4 coming out of the handle. And I measured about halfway down, it's about 2.0. Not a ton of taper, but you start tapering off as the grind kind of kicks in as we go through. And it gets pretty skinny at the tip. And this, this knife is a high performance knife, so the tip goes really well through stuff. The handle is oval, ambidextrous, uh, rosewood with pack wood ferrule, and the rosewood can vary. This one's a little more of the uh, kind of walnut-y flavor, uh, you know, shading. Tight install on the handle with the tang. The circumference of this handle is about 75-ish millimeters, around 3 inches. And uh, you can see they've got a, a gentle curve here at the choil, the back of the blade, into the neck. And it's a perfect spot to, pitch your finger for a, to fit your finger for a pinch grip, so it's comfortable for the uh, pinch grip folks. Balance point, it's a light blade, and the handle's not the lightest one in the world like a hoe wood handle would be. So your balance point is right about there, just in front of that choil. So nimble, nimble, you know, neutral feeling knife on a pinch grip. Let's see, let's take a look at a close-up of this blade. So they have a fair amount of polish to it. Try to do that on the lighting here without getting too crazy. And we'll do that. Sorry, trying to get a decent beauty shot here for the video. So uh, the cladding, is ca cladding line is kind of tricky to see. Let's see if we can kind of check out we can kind of see the cladding line there. It's pretty tricky to see, but there's your cladding line coming through, and then your edge bevel. And this is pretty sharp out of the box, so I'd give it a 6 or 7 out of 10 out of the box. It was quite sharp. You've got hand chiseled kanji on the right side of the blade. On the left side of the blade, you've got some uh, embossed kanji that kind of looks chiseled, but it's not. It's a light embossing effect. It's a nice look as well. Sorry, I'm getting some fingerprints on it. As you can see, it's a fairly shiny finish. Uh, they've done a nice finish job to the spine. The choil's very comfortable and polished and rounded off. Uh, so just pull it out and start working on it, and you're ready to rock and roll. Um, blade is fairly stout and stiff. Uh, the tip has a little bit of flex, but it's really pretty stiff, um, considering how thin the blade is. So it's got a confident feel to it. The um, cutting board look, let's take a peek at that. Here we go. So, and to get towards the back, there's a little bit of a flattish area in the heel. So this spot here is kind of flat for chopping. Little bit of relief on the heel as far as the curve of the edge bevel goes. I mean, the edge profile goes. 
and then just kind of a gentle sweeping belly. It doesn't rock real high. It kind of pops right into that tip pretty quick. Every knife's a little bit different, but the tip angle, you can actually grind that a little different if you are sharpening. But So I can get in there. So it's not going to rock real high. It'll rock over short stuff, at least this one. Uh, but smooth profile, a little bit of a flat towards the heel. So they've done quite a bit, I think, with the 188 that they're using on the length of this one as far as profile goes. So these are well-made, uh, clean grinds, straight, but I, the ones I've seen, uh, smooth profile. So it's a nice line of knives. So um, compared to the Yo-Handled version of this, this is thinner, lighter, and a more high-performance grind. It's a different knife entirely. So here you have the Harukaze Wa, or Japanese handled Awagami Super Guto 180mm knife.